Hello, my name is Michael. You're welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I will be taking you through a case study on Inter AS VPN option C. The agenda of this particular video is as follows. I will show you a recap of the previous videos I have done on the option A and option B with its variants and also focus more on today's topic which is the inter AS MPLS VPN option C otherwise known as route reflector to route reflector MPEBGP. After this I will show you a configuration section where I will take you through each step on how to make configuration and implementation of this particular solution then I will conclude on what we are supposed to look out for and when to actually consider using this option to solve connectivity problems between enterprise branches or remote locations. Finally, the design of all the inter AS option will be shown to you at a glance. Thank you as you also enjoy this video. Please note that the designs, topologies, IP addresses and configurations used for this illustration in this presentation are not representation of any real life entity or entities. They are only imaginary or fictitious. So to the recap. This is a focus on the Inter AS MPLS VPN option A where you have this unique design features something like the ASBRs are configured like normal PEs while each AS is treated as a customer's network. And that in this case is showing here that R1 and R4 being the ASBR of this AS are seeing the entire network of this AS as if they were a customer's equipment connecting to a PE. In order for you to get more details on that, you can check in the description tab to find a link where I explain in details. The next is talking about the option B, which has three variants. That is three methods in which you can actually deploy the option B. The first is the next upsell, followed by the redistribute connected. And the last option for this option B is EBGP multi up option. Each of this variant has its own uniqueness. The unique design feature, particularly in case of the next stop self, is that there is a rewrite of the next stop address on the ASBR as they learn from other ASs. To see more details also in the link below where I have captured the video that explains this in details. Just for a note. This particular option is more scalable than option A, but it is less secure compared to option A. The next here is the redistribute connected method. And the unique design feature here shows that in this case, the ASBR redistributes locally connected inter AS link into the IGP for the local domain or the local AS as you may see. And so this is the mechanism that works in this option B using the redistribute connected method. In this scenario, there is no rewrite of next stop address of the received prefixes from the remote ASBR. So it means that you don't need to bother doing next stop self configuration on this ASBR. To get more details, please check the link in the description and enjoy. Then the last variant for this particular option B is using the multi op method, where you have to specify the EBG multi op value when configuring the MP EBGP between ASBR. For more details as well, you can check the link below in order to get the video where details of this configuration and implementation are explained. Now to the focus of this video which is inter AS MPLS VPN option C otherwise known as route reflector to route reflector here. 
unlike the other options of inter AS MPLS design where you will have the pairing and the exchange of control plane information which includes the MP BGP routes uh, to exchange between the ASBRs directly it is different in this case because the route reflectors of the peering ASs are taking responsibility of that control plane exchange. And that's why in this design you see the session is actually between the route reflector of this AS to the route reflector of this AS. Now very quickly, it is important for you to note that in order to consider this option, there are so many things you have to put into consideration. First and foremost, you need to note that there is need for an exchange of an internal IP for the peering between these two ASs. And this already poses a network security threat, especially when you are looking at the ASs in the light of different organizations. It is regarded as unsecure because it requires an exchange of internal routes between the peering ASs, which could pose a network security risk in the network security context. So, usually, ISP to ISP always do everything in their capacity and with respect to their internal security policies, not to exchange internal details of their network. And if they consider that at any point or for any reason, there is always a serious security analysis and assessment of the risk before they consider such an option. Hence, this option C is preferred when it is used within the same organization, even though it may have presence in different regions of the world. As long as it remains within the same organization, it is a good option to consider provided there are accommodations within the security policy of such an organization. One thing to note with respect to this particular option is that it is very scalable and that is because it leverages on the benefits of scalability that comes with the BGP advanced consideration for route reflector. And you would agree with me that route reflection is a mechanism or a feature which brings about scalability in a large network where you have BGP being implemented. So this benefit has been leveraged to extend and also expand networks across regions within the same organization. And that is exactly what we have reflected in this case. Take for instance, this ISP is the same owner of this AS, but think about these two ASs as to located in different regions of the world. Take for instance, if this was in Asia and this was in Europe, and you have a customer's remote site connected to each of those clouds that are in Europe and that of Asia respectively. There is no bothers when you consider this option as a way of extending connectivity between the services that need to be shared or exchanged between these two sides of the same organization. But you need to also note that each of these regions have their own internet routing policies, which this particular organization or the ISP would also consider in terms of their internal routing or inter-border routing between the ASs. And so it is important for you to note this consideration. In all, you won't have to face the issue of inter-organizational security concerns if they were operated by different entities entirely. And so, this option of MPLS VPN inter-AS design is good to consider when both of them are operating within the same administrative function. In this context of design, the ASBRs are configured to use either BGP4 or static route. 
to reach the loop back of the route reflector. So when you're considering this option of design, you can either do a static route between the ASs on the ASBRs for the reachability of the route reflector. Because the BGP session that you are aiming to establish between the RRs, that is the route reflector, relies on the connectivity of those route reflectors. After this must have been achieved, there is need to also consider disabling the ARF. Remember in the previous video why we have to disable the ARF? It is in order to allow the, the route reflectors to be able to take all VRF information from the remote ASs and maintain a global, single global MP PGP table. That can allow them to reflect to the A, SBRs and probably the DPs in that particular domain. In this option of the inter AS MPLS VPN, an agreement must be reached between the ASs on whether to exchange internal route or this is actually a scenario where you have two different entities that is two different service provider companies talking about this particular option. But usually real life scenario, there will always be a turn down on one side that is not so comfortable because of the security concerns around that. And so it is important to always look at for that kind of blockage that you, you might experience when talking about two different service provider companies. This will lead us into the configuration section and I will take you through the background information of the network design that you have in front of you. Here it is focusing on just the remote sides of an enterprise network. I would like to also use this opportunity to let you know that this design is talking about a story of the connectivity between the campus site of an enterprise and its remote site and also how remote sites can talk directly to each other without having to reach the campus site. In order to get the full grasp of this particular storyline, you need to see the previous videos and see how the progression had been in terms of focus on different parts of the network, especially with respect to this topic, inter AS MPLS VPN and its various options. Like I said before, the enterprise network information are just the ones on top while we have the service provider network information and these are the VRFs that are actually configured and the AS numbers, the RT and RDs as well, the routing protocols internally and also with respect to the BGP that they are running. This is actually the table that shows the information with respect to each of those parts of the network. The assumptions here is that IGP session is in each service provider networks have been converged. That is, all IPs within each of those clouds that you see are able to reach any part of the network internally. Also, the MPLS LDP session in each of the service provider network have converged as well, which means you would see those things already existing and the MPI BGP, that is the internal multiprocall BGP session also has been configured and please note there are no special configuration existing on this router or any router in the network. All VRFs also have been configured. So here are the assumptions that already exist and so don't be surprised if you're expecting to see some part of the configuration and it's not showing there just consider there are existing assumptions in order to get going with this so when you are configuring the asbr in an option c scenario these are the steps that you should take the first is to configure BGP4, which is the ordinary router, BGP, the AS number, and then, then you have to enable 
the label exchange when you are peering by the use of this keyword. I will show you this part in the configuration section. Also, the link to see the configuration section I will specify in the description. Please check that. Alternatively, you can use a static route to the loopback of that air uh, of that route reflector if you are not configuring the bgp for instance you can actually use the static route to reach that particular loopback of the route reflector in the remote as then another thing you need to do is to redistribute the bgp or the static route if you are using the static route and connected another step you need to take is to distribute the bgp or the static route if you are using static route and the connected into as link into the local igp what this is saying is that once you have bgp4 configured let's say between router 9 and router 5 you or if it is static route you're doing as well you need to redistribute this locally connected inter as link into the igp in this case the igp is isis or if it was a static route you have done or configured on this router you have to redistribute it into the igp and the same thing needs to be done on the remote side so that you will be able to extend the MPLS LDP session that will be built between the two um, ASs. And remember, you need to use the filters to allow only the loopback address of the remote route reflector. This is to prevent loops. So take for instance, you have distributed on both ASs and you have route exchange between these two ASs. There are chances that you will have loops going on and on between the two ASs. And so this needs to be considered. Hence, it is important for you to consider filters to only allow the expected loopback IP for each of those route reflector in the ASs respectively. Then redistribute your local IGP into BGP4 with filters to allow only the loopback address to the local RR, that is route reflector, to be advertised to the ASBR via BGP4. So what is happening here is that once you have this configuration of the first phase you need to do the return path which is the mutual distribution between the igp and the bgp4 so that you can have routes coming from the local as to be distributed into bgp that goes to the remote as this is in line with extending connectivity between the RR. Remember also your filters are important. So always note that when you do distribution mutually, there is need for you to consider filters in order to make your routing optimal. Important note here is that on the local ASBR, there is no need to rewrite the next stop address on the received prefixes from the remote ASBR. Just like we have done in previous sections, in previous videos, it is important for you to note that you do not need to configure next stop self on this ASBR when configuring the pairing between the ASBR and the RR or in any wise. You only need to do what you have been told here, that is just redistribute, peer, redistribute, and that's all you need. Don't bother doing the next up self 
um, command. Similarly, on the route reflector, you need to disable the automatic route filter that is on this box here, on this device, and on this device. You will also note that the route reflector here is also the PE to this remote site. Yes, that is possible, especially in a scenario where you have limited routers performing certain specific roles in an MPLS network like this. So your design also determines what router plays a particular role and things like that. It only makes your work easier and your troubleshooting in case of any issues later on in order to support the network, your design is very, very key in determining which router is placed in which position to play a particular role. The same thing you need to do is on this route reflector, disable the automatic route filter in order to get this, this single MP BGP table to allow all VRF entries coming from the other end to be installed in that global MP BGP table. The next is to configure your MP EBGP between the RRs, that is in your address family MP BGP pairing. You need to do the pairing between their loopbacks. And you also need to specify, very importantly, the EBGP multi op value, because now that is a function of your routing. So if you allow this to go through this path, for instance, is to see one, two, then three hops away. And you need to specify your EBGP to be number four in this case. And the same thing here. So think about the shortest path in order to route your traffic between the loopbacks on the RRs. That is very key and also configure the ASBRs and PEs as your route reflector client. So the idea here is that once this route reflector exchange routes remotely, they will reflect it to the PEs and the ASBRs. In this case, it is itself that is the PE, so it reflects it to the ASBR. This also will reflect to the ASBRs. And that is actually what this steps is saying. I will show you the steps in configuration section as well and how each of these can be verified. Then note, do not configure next of self, which is why we are talking about the, the last note that you do not rewrite next of address. Also use your filter on the MPBGP4 advertisement to drop look back address of the remote route reflector that is learned via BGP to prevent instability of the MP BGP session between the route reflector. So use your filters here to drop the loopback address that is learned from this session because it will definitely pick the loopback address here and return it here. And once this senses its loopback address in that update, it becomes really unstable if it senses the loopback address of this remote through this session, it becomes really unstable. And that is why you need to do the filter to drop the loopback address of the remote route reflector on this session. Note please, the BGP source address must not be learned via BGP, else the BGP session will continuously flap. That's exactly what we're saying. So you need to take note of that and use the filter appropriately. I will show you this also in the configuration section. Here, we're talking about the required configuration on the PE. This is basically just configuring your MP IBGP4 to the local um, route reflector. So I will take this as a case study. This is the PE in this case. So all you need to do is to configure the MP IBGP to this local route reflector. Also do the import of VRF entries. So depending on the VRF for this case, the VRF here is as shown. You will see that in the table that I shared earlier. 
and i'll also show you in the configuration video where you can specify how you import the intended or desired remote vrf into the local vrf table all you just need to do is to do the importation command under the vrf alternatively you can do the rt feature rewrite uh, the rt feature rewrite will be done on either of your preferred points of the network if you want the entire network to see it without having to rewrite it anywhere else you can do it on the route reflector because that's the point of entry into the local AS. And so when you do that, it will reflect accordingly to the VRFs that are installed or configured on each of those local devices. Alternatively, you can also do this on the ASBR depending on how they are learning or exchanging those prefixes. But in this case, I would rather advise that you do the filtering on the route reflector where you have all the routes being, you know, converged on these devices and you can easily filter out or rewrite as the case may be. Then importantly is your PECE routing protocol. This can be any of the routing protocol that is allowed whether ospf bgp isis or even static route depending on what you're doing but for the purpose of this particular case uh, bgp is considered to be used for the pece exchange and so i will take you through this configuration and you will see how these things are going Please find the configuration video in the description tab below. Thank you.